What's up guys, Andrew Evers here. There have been a lot of videos assessing the performance of the new MacBook Pro, but most of them take a look at the top tier $4,300 model. We wanted to take a more budget conscious approach and evaluate the baseline 15 inch model that comes in at $2,400. On a day to day basis, I do most of my editing on the rig, so that's the performance I'm accustomed to. But let's see what kind of performance we can get out of the MacBook Pro. So if you've used Premiere or Final Cut, when it comes down to it, both of them do more or less the same thing. You're not really gaining any functionality or losing any functionality between the two pieces of software. But the one main thing that I wanted to assess was whether or not Final Cut provided a smoother experience in the editorial process. I've been hearing a lot about how Final Cut works really well with Apple's hardware. They've optimized the software to function well on their machines. I typically edit in Premiere, but I thought I'd give Final Cut X a shot uh, and see how the new MacBook Pro handles our 4K workflow. For the most part, everything plays back very smoothly. I'm not running into issues, and that's mostly my main concern. I don't want the workflow to interfere with the creative process of putting in clips, organizing my timeline, and cutting together a video. At first, I noticed that the settings were configured for better performance over quality. Even adjusting it to better quality, I still got smooth playback. Now, I did notice that uh, the fans started to kick in and the laptop itself got warmer, so it was definitely taxing the hardware, but it kept up just fine, which was pretty impressive. And so I have to say, I think Apple's done a pretty good job of um, configuring and, and building Final Cut around the different hardware components that they incorporate into their machines. Playback in Premiere seems a lot more laggy. Um, I can't play it at full resolution, um, at least unrendered. Uh, looks like playing back at half resolution works a little bit better, but I'm still getting some stuttering. Um, a few drop frames here and there. It's not a very smooth experience. It looks like adjusting to quarter resolution, so from 4K, that would be 1080p. That's where we're actually getting the same sort of smooth playback that we were getting in uh, Final Cut. So it looks like as you're, you're dropping stuff into your timeline and beginning to edit, that's gonna be okay, but uh, you're gonna have to run a quarter resolution, which is not bad. Like a lot of times, especially on a, a laptop, you kind of expect these compromises to be made. And then to actually see a, a complete representation of your edit and how it's gonna look on final export, you'll have to render everything out beforehand. Not a super technical test, I just kind of jumped into the software kind of give you a glimpse of uh, the user experience between both ends of the spectrum, whether using Final Cut or Premiere. Definitely can tell that Adobe struggles a little bit more with the same sort of footage and effects compared to Final Cut. Exporting out of Final Cut Pro, it took six minutes and 55 seconds to render about a six and a half minute timeline of 4K footage to 1080p H.264 codec. And this was with background rendering. The same H.264 export to 1080p out of Premiere, it took nine minutes and 30 seconds. The computer got noticeably louder and warmer during the export too. For reference, the rig Premiere export was four minutes and 12 seconds. All right, so this is my favorite part of the video, not because we're here eating ramen, which is one of my favorites, but because we're doing the gaming portion. We're gonna try out Diablo, one of my favorites. First thing I wanted to try was just to see how the game would run at max resolution and it's pretty choppy. And this is with a resolution of uh, 3840 by 2400. And uh, this is with all the settings maxed out on high. And we're getting about 17 to 18 frames per second. It's pretty laggy. I mean, you can still play the game, but any of the graphical improvements you get are gonna be negated by the sacrifices you get in gameplay. So uh, it doesn't work very well. All right, so we're gonna switch it down to something a little bit more reasonable. Messed around with the settings a little bit, we found that uh, the best compromise between uh, gameplay and graphic performance it was uh, when we dropped the resolution down to about 1920 by 1200, we were still able to keep all of our settings on high with the exception of shadow. Uh, we brought those down to medium, and that significantly improved our frame rate. We got about an extra 20 frames per second out of that. Got some loot. Yeah. Get my diamonds and my insightful ring of valor. All right, booting up some Borderlands here. Running at uh, 1920 by 1200, which is the maximum resolution you can do, uh, we got Decent uh, frame rate, actually. Uh, we seem to be averaging kind of in the mid 30s. Just as a uh, curiosity, see like what would happen if we dropped down the resolution. We dropped that to 1680 by 1050, and we're still getting pretty good uh, frame rate. And we're still in the mid mid 30s. Definitely playable. Um, oh sh damn! I'm getting up right now. Booting up Tomb Raider. It's going to be the most uh, graphically intense game that we're going to test out right now. I decided not to go with anything too crazy just because, you know, you have to understand, obviously, it's a portable computer. So I want to try and find something that was going to be reasonably intensive performance-wise, but at the same time, it wasn't going to completely break the computer. 
uh, because we do want to be able to play the game. That's like the whole point. First time we booted up, we went ahead and did the automatic settings that Tomb Raider configured for us, which was a resolution of 1650 by 1050. All the settings were kind of like on average. And we're getting about an average frame rate of 42. Pretty smooth, everything is able to play back. It looks good. On the flip side, I decided to see what would happen if we spec this thing all the way out. We pushed the resolution and all the settings up to max. So we did the resolution up to 3360 by 2100 and all the settings on high. And that's where uh, things got pretty bad. Um, got about an average frame rate of about 13.8. Thing, you can barely even run this. Verdict on gaming, computer definitely can handle it, but you have to understand the limitations it has. Uh, you won't be able to have everything completely spec'd out. But then again, this is not really a gaming computer, but it definitely works. You know, it's like if you want a game on your Mac, you certainly boot up a, you know, a few games and have a good time. Kind of de-stress, just like I am. All right, so now that we have gaming and editing out of the way, I wanted to see how much rendering horsepower we could get out of the new MacBook Pro. We're gonna go ahead and open up Maya, which is 3D animation software for animation, modeling, and rendering. So we got the file open. Let me go ahead and kind of navigate around. And I'll change this over from wireframe to the shaders. Okay, so for the most part, it looks like it's pretty smooth. I'm able to kind of reorient myself around the scene, um, zoom in here and check stuff out. It's not lagging too much. So it's still usable. It seems to be holding up pretty well. Um, let's go ahead and see what it's like when I go ahead and try and render this out. So let me position the camera. We're gonna go ahead and render using Arnold, which is a particular rendering software. We'll change that to JPEG. I'm gonna go ahead and do this as uh, HD 1920 by 1080. And um, our quality is 100, so we should get a pretty interesting image out of this. So our, uh, our full render time came out to about uh, 421. I went ahead and ran the same scene on the rig using Maya, and that one came out at a minute and 46 seconds. That was using the same settings with Arnold. It does a decent job at running Maya. Uh, you could definitely get your work done on here. I was really curious just to see. Um, I've used Maya a decent amount, mostly on a, a desktop computer. So the baseline 15-inch MacBook Pro performed decently well, but at that price point, it's a little underwhelming. It works well within Apple's ecosystem, but the really only intensive application that you would need out of Apple would be Final Cut. When it comes to gaming, 3D rendering, or even Premiere, it doesn't function very well. You're probably better off getting another computer that's better specced at that price point. It's gonna perform better because it has more computing horsepower. Now, if you need Final Cut, you're gonna be pretty much stuck using one of Apple's computers, and the MacBook Pros are gonna work very well for that. If you're gonna be using your computer primarily for Premiere, or 3D work, or any gaming, then you might want to look elsewhere. You'll probably get a better value at that price point. There are good gaming options out there like the Razer Blade, or even the new Surface Book computers that are probably a more appealing option. What do you guys think? Any MacBook Pro users out there using their computer for gaming, 3D work, or any of the stuff that we evaluate in this video? What's your performance been like? We'd love to hear about it. Leave a comment down below. Until next time, I'm Andrew from Techno Buffalo. See you next video. Before we head out, I want to tell you guys about the Science Go app. I've been watching a lot of the old Mythbusters content on there, and if you guys want to watch along too, be sure to download the app. You can watch your favorite Science Channel shows anytime, anywhere. Click the link below to learn more. Oh yeah, ramen. I feel like uh, like half of our videos, at least all my videos, have food in them. So I'm interested in you guys to do food and tech at the same time. Gotta have your priorities straight.